Hello again. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about two of our favorite features that we just, two improvements that are our favorites. One of them is for developers and one of them is for production systems. This is a feature uh, that we suspect is going to be well received. You can now attach the debugger to a running application. There, are, there is a caveat in that no breakpoints will be hit, of course, because uh, before you attach, because you're not running the debugger. But this is an amazingly useful feature. You can also run applications in what we call debug ready mode, which is essentially running the application through the debugger without stepping into it first. This means that everything in that application, all of the data structures that we use for debugging, will be there. These data structures won't be there uh, if you just run the application normally and then attach. We've also added the method uh, that you can see in front of you as a partner to the app.debug application method by which you can programmatically start debugging an application. Now, running in debug ready mode will give you about an additional 50% overhead on the, the running time of the, the application. So that, that's why we don't always, I mean, this, I said this was for development. Uh, and I'll just give you a quick demonstration of what I mean. See the checkbox here, the run in debug running mode. I'm not going to click that. Okay, a very simple form for a simple demonstration. Click the button, do stuff. Now you don't need to attach on a modal dialog box or anything like that. You can attach whenever you want. Just for this demonstration, I will do so. Now down at the user interrupt and attach the debugger. Now when we when control returns to the application, we're now debugging the application. And you can see it's a very simple application. And that's all there is to that. Next one, and this is for production systems, is more robust process dumping. Uh, to tell you about this, I need to give you a small history lesson. In Jade 7.0, we took control of our IOs. Previous to that, we'd been relying on the operating system file cache, uh, file system cache, to do that for us. And, but now we manage our own disk cache. That means we can balance the uh, I.O. load instead of... If you don't do direct I.O., there's one Windows API call by which you can ensure that everything that your process has said to write to the disk has actually been written to the disk. And that's flush file buffers, and that is incredibly expensive. So by using direct I.O., we can, as I said, balance the, balance the activity. Now this has caused a little bit of confusion in people that upgrade to 7.0 because it now looks like that all of that disk cache, all of the additional memory is being used by the J, the database. And this is not in not in fact the case. It's just that it was that memory was always in use by the J database, but it was concealed as Windows file cache, which is 
typically invisible to the users. But now we manage that ourselves. Combined with, when, when things go especially wrong, Jade takes a process dump in. Uh, operating Jade systems, you may have encountered this before. And the unfortunate irony here is that large databases are often important databases which can least afford the downtime. So if you're, if we are taking a process dump, as we do because it is our strongest diagnostic tool, it's a snapshot of the process memory at any point in time, that can take, we underestimated the effect that, that would have on production systems. That can take longer than you want your system to be unresponsive for. So we're introducing the Jade Watchdog. This makes us more compliant with Microsoft recommendations on taking process dumps, in that process dumps should be taken from out of process, a separate process. Because usually when you're taking a process dump, the process, the executable from which that you want to dump is in a faulting state. And that can be problematic for when you actually want to take the dump itself. So now, each JAD process, or JADRAP, or JADAP, or anything, will start a child process, which will receive those messages to dump, and take the dumps for it. When we combine that feature with excluding the disk cache, we make dumps, process dumping, much faster and much more reliable. And this is such an important feature that we're backfitting it to J7. Just as a small illustration, on my computer, if I start up a JAD route with a 12 gigabyte disk, disk cache, you can see here it took five minutes to dump that process. If I start the same JAD wrap up with the same disk cache, it's less than a second and it only produces a 500 meg dump file. That means your production system can come straight back up. And that's, that's it from me. Does anybody have any questions? With the um, debugger that you attach to the running application, mm -hmm. <coughs> if you don't have breakpoints and the application is still running, what is the debugger doing? Is it, you showed it stopped there because you're waiting on an event. Yes. Does it just keep continually tracing what the application is doing? Sorry, I don't understand the question. If you're... Well, the application may not be idle waiting on an event, maybe. Yep. In a processing loop. Yes. Like that. We will, the debugger will uh, break in uh, on entry to the next method. And does it stop there and wait for you to go continue? Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. So it's yeah, a form it's of break point, it's a form of... Um, it's it's stepping in, it's stepping the debugger yeah. in, yes. Yeah, okay. Essentially what happens is when whenever a method is entered, uh, we have to build it in one or two states, either runtime or in debug mode. So um, by turning that debug ready on, that means that we're always building it in debug ready mode. So any method that hasn't been executed under that mode, you can't step back into. So if you're in a modal, modal dialog and you attach, it, you can't get back to the methods that are on the stack because they weren't in debug ready mode. So if you didn't have that option on. So does that make it? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, just, sorry, bear with me for one second. Now we're running a little fast this afternoon, so ignore the, ignore the times, but these are the topics we've talked about today, just to jog your memory. Quite like to hear any questions on any of the topics, as you've been sitting here thinking about them. And nobody has any questions. Hmm. Yes? Um, post crash of a yep. process and crash, can we get it to re-execute in an app or something along those lines as a failure handler? We the database itself doesn't do that because the database can't know what state, whether or not it's appropriate to, to even attempt that. 
Um, usually, if you want that kind of functionality, you rely on the JCare Systems Manager or your, other, your own Systems Manager. All right. There are no questions on what we've talked about today. Does anybody have any suggestions for future features? Does anybody have anything they really want? Yes. What would you like us to think about? I'd like the uh, client downloader to recognise that uh, you asked. Yep. <laughs> the, um, the operating system on a thing client is um, 64 bit and uh, automatically upgraded to the 64 bit thing line. We've got, we've got thousands of thing clients out there that have upgraded. Okay, we are currently investigating the, the ability to do this. It can't, I mean, it's not that simple as discovering that the operating system is 64 bit because 32 bit processors can still run it. You still want 32 bit processors to run. So yeah. we are currently investigating this. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes, one. Yes. Can we get the Apache module for Linux compiled? Oh, for for Jet 7 and 7 1. Even if it's not consistent, just the Apache module. We are supporting Apache 2.4, I believe. Yeah, but you're only compiling the module for Windows, so it's useless for any Linux service. It's the same code, but we just want to compile it. We'll have a, have a look at, I would say, the generically Apache um, usage of questions we used to get quite a lot of five, six, seven, eight years ago. Barry, 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 Barry now. So, that's what I'm saying. I have the contact support. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, have, we'll have a look at it. Uh, I've got one in there already. Uh, I saw one in the right up to the Patreon. Is there one in the right up to the Patreon? Well, there's a test to be done. Well, the question was, were you supporting 2.4 and then were you going to run by Linux as well? I think it was 2 or 3 part of the question. Okay. Gareth, yes. can you take the next one before the parents? Yeah, we'll follow that up. Well, I'm not going to take too much time. I know <coughs> when you go to um, Kaikoura to the seal colony, they warn you never to stab between a seal and the water, and I'm aware that the drugs <laughs> drunk some further at the back. Um, I just want to quickly say that you should all have an um, evaluation form, and I know it's a pain, but we'd really appreciate it if you could fill that because it helps us to do a better job uh, next time and understanding where we can um, explain things better and so forth. So please, please fill that. We had a, I think, 100% compliance on the internal TOI, so I'm hoping we can exceed that. Um, I just want to very quickly talk about product direction. Um, one of the things that we're quite consciously trying to do is to focus the product on the areas that are important to you and the areas that are important to our other customers and partners. So what that means is we're going to try to stop doing things, some things that are either unused or very lightly used, and put more effort into things that are heavily used. So <coughs> there's going to be some communications coming out. This is not in any way a, a trick to reduce our commitment. We're intending to put the same amount of work into everything. It's just that we want to focus on stuff that's really useful. And, and some of you that have had exposure to the internal workings will know that we do an incredible number of combinations, for example, of builds and tests. Um, we test a lot of features that are no longer used, for example, rational rows, some of you might remember that. Um, all of that stuff has to be built, tested and um, gone through in every release, every hot fix and so forth. If we can stop doing some of the stuff that no one's actually using anymore, then we can do twice as much on the stuff that is important. So we're not going to do anything without communication. Everyone's going to have a chance to have some input. Um, but you can expect to see a flow of, of uh, communication around that. And obviously, responding to that is going to be quite important. Um, I'd like to thank you all for coming. I know that, that some of you have travelled a reasonable distance to come to this, and we appreciate that. I hope you found it useful. You can tell us on the evaluation form either way, I guess. Um, and then we'll carry on and have drinks and food. Thank you very much. <laughs>